Hi, welcome back to part three of my Active Shooter video series. So today we're going to show you the final version of my daughter's backpack that I built for her. So if you haven't seen the other two videos, you can go back and watch them. I'll put the links in the description below. And if this is interest you, please keep watching. All right, hi, I'm Roderick. I'm a certified farms and taxes instructor. I'm also a certified active shooter instructor with two separate organizations. Um, so if you're catching this video, you haven't seen the other two, the links are in the description. You can go back and watch them. But just to get you up to speed, my daughter asked for a ballistic book bag about a month and a half ago before all these events started happening recently. So I bought the bag and I was just gonna put it together over the summer and give it to her for school when she starts high school um, next school year. But then after all the events, um, the, what was it? The grocery store, the school shooting, the hospital, and several, I think two others, um, I just decided to put the bag together for her now. And I figured if I was doing it, other parents might have some interest in it. So that's what this video series is about. So I'm just gonna go over her bag, um, the finished product, and just kind of give you some my thought process kind of of why I did what I did. Um, her, my daughter's bag, I will say um, up front is overkill. You don't need everything that she has. My daughter has a bunch of classes, you know, that I teach. So she has a skill set to use a lot of the stuff that's in her bag. And we've already kind of used most of it before. So like I said, you don't have to have everything in here, but I just want her to be as prepared as possible. So let's get to it. She has the Vertex, I think it's a Ready 2 bag. Um, it's pretty decent, I like it. Um, I would actually get it for myself. Um, it just seems, a, for me, it seems a little small. I guess I just carry too much stuff. Um, so this is the bag that she decided on going with. And let's see here. I think this pouch is empty. So the main, this little, main admin pouch here, as we call it. It's empty. She can use it however she sees fit. This has a nice little grab handle here. So in this first pocket, it has Molly. So it's Molly attachment here and here, and it's also Velcro. So we'll start with this one here since it's the easiest one. We have a GMRS radio. So she has our, she knows if the call sign is on the back. So she can always, if she forgets that she knows what the call sign is, it's already preset to the radio channel that I want her on. And the thought process behind this, her having a radio is, let's say she, an incident happens, she gets away and she's at a staging location and she can't use her cell phone because every parent is trying to call their child. She can at least pull out this radio and reach me and I can still get in contact with her. So that's the thought process behind this. And then knowing my daughter, her cell phone is probably dead. Um, next, we have these little night E sticks. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Yep, so they're night ease sticks. They're waterproof and reusable. And it floats, is what it says. So it lasts about 60 hours and it goes about one meter deep underwater. So this one here, you just twist it. And let's see if that shows up on camera. A little bit too light. Yeah. So you twist it and it just glows a purple color. So she has a red one and a green one. This here, um, these are for visual um signaling so my thought process behind it is whenever you're in an active shooter event you always kind of want to get to an exterior wall or ex you know exterior part of the building because there's normally windows there and you can kind of hide out because it's on the outside and they're probably doing stuff on the inside so i would like for her to have a way to visually communicate with people outside so let's say if she's at school and she's on the second floor 
she can toss up a light, hey, we're green here, but they still know that she's there, or hey, we're red here, we need help, you know, and then they kind of know where, where she is. Now in here, I did not open this up last time, um, but she has a battery bank. Like I said, her phone is probably gonna be dead. She plays games and whatnot. Um, here she has a thermal blanket. Um, yes, emergency thermal blanket. She has that here. Um, when you, during traumatic events, you can lose a lot of blood. And when you lose a lot of blood, you lose a lot of heat. This here, I'm not going to unpack it, but this here is a VF-17 panel. And I actually have the whole, pan the rest of the panel that I cut off from this one that I'll show you. So VF is just a visual flag. And it's basically a canvas material. So it's this hot pink on one side and then this orange on the other side. So we use these overseas. You would tie one side to the to the um, passenger side of your car, drape this side on the other part and then hook it through your doors so you can drive down the road and still, you know, get have an aircraft know this is your vehicle, you know, so if you need to have um, people pick you up, this will be a good way to signal aircraft where you are. So all I did with this is I just cut this section off for her, which basically mirrors this section here. So she has two ties, so she could tie it to a door, she could drape it out the window and just basically send, signal people that, hey, somebody's in this area or whatnot. So that's the per that's the purpose of that. So I just cut it down to size. Then she has this pouch here is the Mexpedition. No, I think it's a Mexpedition entry pouch or ent entity pouch is what this one might be. Um, or it could be another one because there's another Mexpedition pouch in here. This one here is just, I think, a five, you know, this is an off-brand radio. Um, holder. Now down in here, we have a battle board um, Lee 4.0 in here, and it's Velcro to the back. And on here, let's see if we can cover up her personal information. All right. So here we just have kind of a pace plan for her. So it's basically a phone tree contact list. So if her phone dies and she needs somebody's phone number, you know, mine's, her mom's, her aunt's, or anything like that, or just, you know, other emergency points of contact, she has their, their um, actual numbers here. Um, also, if someone were to find her and she's unconscious or whatnot, they have a list of how to contact us. Um, then she has a pace plan um which if you don't know what a pace plan is it just um you just, it's just an acronym so primary alternate contingency and emergency so she has a place a pace plan for how to contact us and then she has an emergency action plan and it's basically steps that she needs to do in case of emergency from alerting someone all the way to you know keep fighting you know seat cover stuff to that nature um and then she has on here the acronyms for CPR, CAB, and then um, the acronym um, MARCH from TCCC. Um, so she's had all those classes. So she knows how to perform CPR. She knows how to perform um, basic life saving skills. And then on the back of this form is a map of her AO, let's call it. And it's just key locations on it to where she knows, hey, I go here, I go here. And then I have a map as well. So she has that. And this just Velcros to the bottom of her bag. And it's tucked out of the way. But outside of that, she still has all of this free space to use. Uh, let's see here. And in her main compartment is... She has a laptop sleeve. Um, at her school, 
I'm not sure how high school is going to be, but as of right now, she only needs her Chromebook. All their homework is on their, is online. All the books are online. So it's not too much she really has to carry with her, which is kind of why we can get away with some of the extra stuff in this bag. Now, she also has this guy here. This is the Gotenna Mesh. And what this does is allows me to communicate with her via text message. And it also gives me her location. So all she has to do is turn it on. It Bluetooths to her phone. So when I'm in range, she can send me a text. So let's say she can't use the radio or it's not safe to use the radio just because you don't want to give away your position. Um, she can still text me. And um, the reason that I have these comm plans in here is because when a situation happens, if you guys are old enough to remember 9-11, cell phones were jammed and there was no way to get in touch with somebody. So you kind of have to go back to old school ways versus relying on you know newer technology. So that's kind of why we have this stuff in place. And so that just goes right here. Other than that, she has the other two slots free. She has the entire back panel here free. Now to the main part, we're going to flip these here. Let's see. So we're going to flip this here. So on the back panel, uh, we're just going to unzip it. And this is her whole medical kit. So this is her whole medical kit. So this is a full mini IFAC. And this is the IFAC that I sell here. So these are the contents of it. Let's see if we can get that in, in focus. Here, let's try this camera. Let's see here if we can get that in focus. Okay, that's a little bit better. So basically she has three IFAX. She's only missing two of the gloves and two of the North American Rescue shears. Um, they're going to get donated. I have a friend in the medical community um, that they can use those, so I'm just going to give it to them. But she has a full IFAC here. She has the extra tourniquet here, tourniquet here, and then this here are the rest of the contents, but just here. And all this stuff here is Velcro. Velcro is off and on. She can readjust it or whatnot. These pouches are Velcro, and this here is Velcro as well. Now, the part that everybody wants to see is her ballistic panel. Let's switch. It's her ballistic panel is it goes here so let's see if we can kind of pull it out on camera there we go so this is a ballistic panel from premier body armor so basically it's rated for um pistol pistol rounds um i know what that person in the inbox or in the um, comment section is saying right now you need to stop it for rifle rounds i agree with you but she's not going to carry a steel plate it's going to be too heavy and if it's too heavy she's not going to use it so we can get away with this so something is better than nothing so that is her backpack um i did make one for myself and as soon as I bought the panel and put it in and kind of tricked out the bag for myself, I decided that it wasn't a good idea. I already had something that's a little bit better. Um, and I can show that in a later video to save time. Um, but yeah, so that's the backpack that I made for my daughter. So, oh, the reason, but let's do the reason behind the medical stuff. So what you have to remember is during these incidents, Historically, you have about eight to nine minutes before you can get medical attention. So once the police are called, they normally arrive about three to four minutes. Then for them to do their thing and clear the scene and emergency personnel be allowed to get in is about like eight, nine to 10 minutes. 
So if someone has life-threatening bleeding or, or another emergency, she'll be able to take care of them and to help arise. So she, like I said, she already has all the classes, um, CPR, first aid, AED, um, traumatic um, medical. Um, she's taken TCCC with me and some other things. So that's kind of the process. So she has enough stuff to treat herself and she has enough stuff to treat other people if necessary. Um, and like I said, she's taken both of my active shooter classes. So she's, I'm comfortable with her having this gear. Um, another parent asked me, is it okay for her to have the scissors? And I don't see why not. We give kindergartners scissors, you know, they take to school and, you know, they give the kids scissors at school. These are just medical shears. Um, they're blunted at the end. Let's see if I can get this off. It's not coming off. Let's take the one out of her bag. So they're just blunted at the end. They're not sharp. They just, you know, use the cut fabric. And then another person asked about the radio. The radio's not turned on. I assume if she could have a cell phone, she could have a radio. So they basically do the same thing. So I don't really see an issue with that. The only thing I will say is... I guess now if you live in New York, you can't have the, the, this ballistic panel um, from the way they wrote their law is what layers of fabric, 10 to 15 layers designed to stop um, projectiles, which is basically soft armor. So that is now illegal. So I guess the kids there can't, you know, use something like this, um, you know, I think steel plates are still a viable option. I would not go with ceramic just because you don't want to drop it. But other than that, that's my daughter's backpack. Um, hopefully you like this video in this series. If you um, have any questions, please feel free to ask. I try to answer them all. And then sometimes I find people are replying to videos a couple of weeks after I did it. So I try to reply to those as well. Um, if this interests you, you know, I'm, I, I'm mostly a shooting channel, but we also have other stuff planned. Um, so please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas of stuff that you want to see in the future, please let me know. All right. Have a good day and always watch your six.